All right, so I had to do one subject that would really matter a lot to pharmacology. I would say it's uh, local anesthesia. Why? Well, again, understanding pharmacology means understanding local anesthesia and vice versa. Plus, man, if I had to pick one thing that could cause you grief in your office on a daily basis, one thing we do in dentistry all the time that could lead to medical complications would be anesthesia. I often tell my students, you know, when they're learning anesthesia for the first time, love you guys, but you really are wielding a deadly weapon, you know, and so use it cautiously and, and be advised that uh, you've got to be on top of your game if you're administering anesthesia. Now, a lot of people hear me say this and say, come on, I did this all day long. I give injections all day. I never have a problem. Everything's fine. Great. But I'm happy for you as long as you never had that issue. But, you know, I, as a speaker and having at this point, I think I just crossed a thousand presentations in my, in my career so far, but hard to believe. Um, and having taught as many years as I've taught in dental schools and hygiene schools now going on 25, I've seen a lot just from sheer aggregation, right? Of all those experiences. So there are complications. I serve as an expert witness and testimony sometimes. So I've seen a lot of those cases go to trial and sometimes get settled out of court, but uh, there's always depositions. There's always expert witnesses. There's always, uh, there's always everybody who thinks they're smarter than everybody else in the room. So uh, I would say lucky for you and I'm happy for you and bless you if you've never had any issues, but if you've had, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's not wish for any more. So we'll start off with anesthesia and we'll give it the comeuppance, the uh, respect that it deserves. All right. I guess we all have to be a little, ex little expert in this. Yeah. I mean, I think we need to be experts because not only are our patients going to be users of cannabis, but maybe even us. Um, let's face it. It's not just our patients. We work in an industry that is wrought with, for lack of a better word, repetitive injuries. It may very well be dental professionals that are users of cannabis. How does it impact us in dentistry? How does it impact everything that's happening uh, in the world of dentistry? Because many people are thinking that uh, by any chance, maybe cannabis may have a use in dentistry. Chair aside, what? Well, I'm going to say this. If cannabis ever becomes used to chair aside in dentistry, I want to know who's bringing the party. So what are we going to talk about in this next five hours? Just kidding. The pharmacology and mechanism of action of opioids and non-opioid analgesics and their potential for abuse. The intended role, when you should use them, when you should not use them. What else? Strategies for developing a pain management plan that's individualized. Why is that important? Well, many people will tell you that dental pain, pain is in a very individualized response. So therefore the management of that pain, it makes sense, should be as individualized. And of course, Appropriate prescribing practices. Now, I know we have many hygienists with us today, but it's important for you to know about how these are prescribed as well, because it's not going to be all the time when your dentist prescribes an opioid to treat dental pain. 